who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> first reading is the reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall stand in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, seeing the blood I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your song. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. God bless you. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. God bless you. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay, in the presence of all his people. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you'll proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during the supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper, took off his outer garments, he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you also should do. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, with Holy Thursday, we are in the upper room in Jerusalem, where Jesus celebrated the first Mass, the Last Supper, where he told his disciples, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in order that sins may continue to be forgiven. We're commemorating the first Mass by celebrating a Mass. And that's what Sacred Heart is here for. This is the place where Christ comes down from heaven whenever the Mass is said. The value of a Mass is infinite. Padre Pio said, it was a little prayer in our bulletin a few weeks ago, if you only understood the value of one Mass, you would crawl on your hands and knees in order to be there. If you understood what one Mass can accomplish for you when you enter it with all your heart and soul. First of all, this Mass that is the center of our Catholic faith. I can remember some years ago being at a funeral. And it was a funeral of a person who was not Catholic, although Christian. And I went because one of the children had become Catholic, who I knew well. So I went to the funeral. And I remember at that 
funeral, I knew the person who had died as well. At the funeral, the one who was leading the funeral started out with a big Bible with all sorts of markers, started out by reading something from the Bible. And then they picked up a hymnal and paged through it and said, I think the deceased would have liked this hymn. So let's sing this hymn together. So everyone sang the hymn together. Then the one who was leading the funeral said, would anyone like to say anything now? One person was prepared to say something. That person got up and spoke for over 20 minutes. And as those talks usually are, it had nothing to do with the person who had died. It was all about themselves. And usually, that's what the eulogies are about, me. Uh, so the person finished, and then the leader said, oh, let's sing another song. So they thumbed through, picked out another song. When that song was finished, it was like the steam was lost, and the leader turned around and looked, would anyone else like to say anything? And there was silence. Uh, oh, let's, let's read from the Bible. So they read something else. Would anyone else like to say anything? It seems like in, without people getting up and saying things, um, the whole thing kind of came to a grinding halt. Actually, I remember in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you better not push this, because the person who died was a very challenging individual to get along with. All jagged ends. So you better not keep asking, does anyone want to say anything? Because someone may get up and decide to tell the truth, and then where are we all going to be? At a certain point, the person I was sitting next to leaned over and said, Father, I'm glad we're Catholic. Just, when I die, just let them pray for my soul. You know, leave it at that. It's about the Mass. We don't create this. This is not our work. We don't put this together. We don't make it. We don't design it. We don't craft it. This was given to us by the Son of God himself. We don't try to improve <coughs> on that. And we shouldn't debase it either. We should never reduce it to something cute or ordinary or something that isn't appropriately celebrated with reverence. Because it's not mine, it's not yours, it was given to us by Christ. When the Mass is said, we enter a moment in time that doesn't end. The moment begins with the Last Supper. That moment continues through tomorrow's passion. That moment is completed with the resurrection, but completed for Christ, not for us. It exists for all eternity. The Mass is a moment taken out of time. It is when God forgives us for our sins, opens the gates of heaven, and tells us how he will remain with us. In the Old Testament, when God's people wanted to find him, they came to the temple. And in the middle of the temple, there was this room, maybe a quarter of the size of our church. And in that room, which no one entered, were the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And in the book of Exodus, in the Old Testament, God had said, where the, those commandments are, that's where I am. So when the people wanted to find God, that's why, Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, the apostles, several times a year, they went to Jerusalem to be as close to God as they could get, because that's where he was. Tomorrow we're going to find out he's not there anymore. Now, if we want to find God, 
we come to a different tabernacle, a much smaller one. But God is there because he told us that when we take the bread and say the words that you say, not my words, but the words that you say, when we take the chalice and say the words that he said, not my words, his words, when we do this, sins are forgiven and the world is being saved. Christ is in the act of saving the world for as long as people will exist, they will need salvation. So with each mass, this continues. The salvation of the world, the forgiveness of sins, and that's why Padre Pio said, if we only understood what one mass accomplishes. We know about Our Lady of Guadalupe in the 1500s, Blessed Mother appeared to St. Juan Diego outside of Mexico City. Juan Diego had been a recent convert. He had been an Aztec and worshiped the Aztec gods when he grew up. But once he accepted the Catholic faith, he was a sharecropper farmer. He walked many miles to the field that he worked to share the produce with the owner of the field. The farmer begins to farm at like five o'clock in the morning. Juan Diego would first walk an hour to the nearest church to go to mass in the morning. He would get up at 3 o'clock so that he could get to Mass in the morning and then get to his field because he understood what happened at the Mass. God is coming down from heaven. There is a thought that I always have. Um, is it theologically deep? Probably not. But the thought has remained all the years of my priesthood. When the priest holds up the host, God comes down from heaven and touches it, and it becomes his body. When the priest holds up the chalice, God comes down from heaven and touches it, and it becomes his precious blood. And the salvation that he came to accomplish, our sins are forgiven, the world is saved and life can flourish because of that mass. It's not our creation. God gave it to us. And we approach it at all times with reverence, with the faith of Juan Diego that made him get up at three in the morning so that he could go to mass. From the grace of that Mass, from what God gives us in that Mass, especially if we receive Holy Communion, from that flows charity and kindness and goodness to others. And this is why, as soon as the Mass took place, our Lord did something to show the Apostles that from this must flow, not just your own personal awe, not just your own personal, wow, isn't this great, I was at the Mass, but something has to flow from that that changes your life. God has touched you. You must now touch others. He said, I am among you as one who serves you. I have come to wash you from your sins. It's not just a matter of being impressed. From the grace has to flow service. And that's why the life which stands in awe of the Mass and then is so taken up with its own needs that there's never a thought for anyone else, is so into its own routine of what has to be done that they don't notice people around them and what their needs might be. Those graces are wasted by that person. They've all been poured into the ground. They didn't change me. 
They didn't affect me because I participated in the graces that God gave me, and then I went back and I got so caught up in my own life, I didn't know or see what anyone else needed or what their life was worth. <coughs> the two of them are connected. The miracle of the Mass, and when we receive the grace of that Mass, what has to flow from it is my service, my love, my awareness of the needs of people around me. This is what we take home from the Mass. <coughs> Tonight, on this night, God brought heaven down to earth, and he's going to stay in that moment. When the Mass is celebrated, he will remain to forgive sins, to save us, to open the gates of heaven, and to send us out to take that grace and serve others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church in its liturgy, which is set, again, not something we make up, but something we follow. The church is trying its best this evening to do exactly what our Lord did on this evening. So he performed a great act of service to those who usually serve him. Here at Sacred Heart Parish, if I was going to perform an act of service to all the people who so generously serve this parish, we'd be here until next Thursday, maybe if not beyond, because there are so many. So symbolically, the church asks us to choose 12 who stand in the place of the apostles, representing the service given to God in their parish. And I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for their service and to thank the 12 apostle gentlemen for their willingness to participate in this sacred night.
today once again invites us to experience Christ's love for us. We commemorate the establishment of the priesthood when at the Last Supper Jesus ordained his apostles. By his greatest gift is himself present in the Holy Eucharist and Mass. As we receive Holy Communion today, let us ask God to keep us always united to his Son. The response to each petition will be, Lord have mercy. May Christ's power to teach, govern, and sanctify be recognized by all nations and all those in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That the poor and downtrodden of the earth may learn of Christ's concern for them and thus have hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Then the obedience of Christ, even to death on the cross, be imitated by all those who are subject to authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That the young men and women of our diocese will realize and understand the need for priests and sisters and will listen for God's holy call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deceased family and friends, especially the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God, who has given us the commandment to love one another, 
assist us to practice your charity towards all your creation. Accept our prayers and sacrifices so that we might gain your great gift of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would ask, we're resuming the offertory procession, so I would ask two parishioners in the back to please bring up the gifts. <clears throat> sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Again let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just 
our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was first to offer himself as saving victim, commanding us to make this offering of his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us. We are made strong as we drink his blood that was poured out for us. We are washed clean. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy catholic church be pleased to grant her peace to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant francis our pope john our bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the catholic and apostolic faith remember lord your servants and all here gathered whose faith and devotion are known to you for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage <coughs> to you the eternal god living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our lord jesus christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate 
Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the, this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, 
and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and make them holy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
liturgically in the symbolism and the gestures of the church, we kind of reenact the next stage of what happened to our Lord on this holy night. We know that when the Bible tells us when the supper was ended, he went to the garden with his apostles and he was arrested there. This procession around the church with the Blessed Sacrament calls to mind our Lord being taken from the garden to prison. That night, he was in jail alone <coughs> for the night, waiting for the trial the next morning. So, the Blessed Sacrament is placed in the altar of repose, which kind of looks like a prison cell, but we don't leave him alone. Symbolically, we want to show him that our faith is great and we're not going to run away. We stay with him throughout the night. So people from the parish have signed up for the watches. The Blessed Sacrament will be here and the church will be open till 9 o'clock tomorrow morning for people to come and pray and spend some time with our Lord. Please stand. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As the procession with the Blessed Sacrament passes where you are, genuflect as a sign of your adoration.